They say that big things come in small packages, so when is less more? I happen to think that when you have less of something, you tend to appreciate it more. Wine tasting is all about the art of savoring. Now, as a savvy wine pro, you can spend minutes just pondering a single sip. There's beauty in every drop, as long as you know where to look. This weekly tasting is going to be an exercise in mindful consumption. We've got some pretty amazing wines here, but the bottles are only half size. I mean, look, my wine glasses are practically larger than the bottles themselves. <laughs> Let's see if we can really meditate on what's in here. By the time we're done here, these wines are going to seem larger than life. All of the wines in this pack are from the west coast of the U.S. California and Oregon both fall into the top five wine producers in America, and they make some amazing wines from the Chardonnay and Pinot Noir grapes. Chardonnay and Pinot Noir both come from Burgundy, France, and they were imported to California in the late 1800s and early 1900s by pioneering winemakers like Ernest Wente and Paul Masson. Both of these grapes thrive in moderate climates, and the cool, foggy environment of the California coast provided the perfect location to make some of the first American versions of White Chablis and Red Burgundy. In the 1970s, the California wine industry was still relatively young. Uh, curious hippies, ex-surfers, and farmers started to take to the craft. And as these novices became more serious winemakers, they began looking further north as well to places like Oregon and Washington. The cool coastal regions of Oregon were noted for being particularly well suited to Burgundy grapes too. Let's talk about the wineries that we have represented here. Bernardus Vineyards has been around for over 20 years and is located in California's Carmel Valley on the Central Coast. Their winemaker trained in Burgundy, France, and their vineyard manager spent 13 years working fields in Oregon. The connections are inevitable. Lachini Estate Vineyard is located approximately 30 miles southwest of Portland in the Willamette Valley. The important thing to note about these Lachini wines is that they're produced biodynamically. The biodynamic movement has been around since the 1920s, and it's essentially an organic approach to making wine, but it involves some intriguing cosmic aspects that depend on the astrological calendar. Biodynamic wines have a reputation for being earthy, sometimes funky and even rustic. It'll be interesting to see if these reflect that. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too big of a wait. Let's taste these little bottles. We're going to start with the youngest wines first and save the older ones for last. Because older wines tend to be more complex, I expect there will be more to talk about. This is the Bernardus 2017 Chardonnay, and it comes from Monterey County, California. This Chardonnay is produced with grapes from two distinct locations, Arroyo Seco and Santa Lucia Highlands. Arroyo Seco is a warmer climate and tends to produce bolder wines with higher alcohol content, and the Santa Lucia Highlands is a cooler region of higher elevation that produces wines that are higher in acid. Let's start by swirling our wine so that we can unlock all those beautiful aromas. Already on the nose, there's this dichotomy, and I think this is coming from the two separate vineyards. We have this sort of full-bodied, ripe tropical fruit, citrus in there, and then there's this herbal note on top of that, almost like mint. And there's definitely a dairy element here. I think butter is too strong a word. It's a little bit more subtle than that. I would call it like maybe cream. And that dairy element comes from a winemaking technique known as malolactic fermentation. Wow, this is such a big wine. I'm surprised this little bottle can contain it. <laughs> it's as smooth as silk. 14.2% alcohol, so it's really got that body in there. Um, the citrus is the first thing that hits you. It's like a bite of a fresh lemon and the tropical fruit that we talked about, tangerine peel too. And I do believe that herbal sort of minty sensation is coming from those higher elevation vineyards in the Santa Lucia Highlands. This is an example of how you can taste terroir, which is something that I've covered in other weekly tasting videos. This is a classic California Chardonnay. It's big, it's bold, it's silky and smooth, and there's a lot of complexity of flavor in there. Let's go straight to the food pairing recipe for this wine. We have a sesame crusted ahi tuna. And the key ingredient in this dish is the lime. I think that's going to bridge over to the citrus and mint flavors in the shard and really send it over the edge. Next is the Bernardus 2017 Pinot Noir. This comes from the Santa Lucia Highlands AVA. The winemaker at Bernardus really wanted to accentuate the fresh fruitiness of this wine, so he backed off on the oak treatments. And true to form, this Pinot Noir is really coming on strong with red fruits, especially strawberries. And the wine is four years old, and as it starts to age, it's exhibiting this beautiful tea leaf sort of aroma as well. As expected, it's fresh and fruity. It's very tart too, strong in cranberry flavors. 
The acidity is super high, so this makes your mouth really water, which means that it'd be great for food. One of the things that I love about Pinot Noir is that it's always very forthcoming. It doesn't hide what it is. It usually delivers one or two key flavors, and the really good examples do it beautifully. We're gonna match this wine up with a garlic roasted chicken. Pinot Noir is great with roasted poultry, and that earthiness, sort of that sweet tea flavor, is going to be a great match for the rosemary and thyme in the dish. Okay, so let's trek northward to Oregon. When you're trying to appreciate older wines, it's important to adjust your expectations. These are not gonna be like those fresh young wines that you buy off the shelf and drink right away. With mature wines, fresh fruits start to turn into dried fruits. There are some herbal notes that come out of the wine. The alcohol starts to pronounce itself a little bit more, and you get these, uh, what they call tertiary aromas and flavors, things like spice and tobacco. It takes some time to get your head around older wine. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to save these wines for last. This is the Lachini Vineyards 2013 Pinot Noir, and this comes from the Chehalem Mountains region. Pinot Noir always looks so light and elegant in the glass, but the additional thing here is that it's eight years old, so it's starting to show some signs of age too. It's going from that fresh, bright red color now to a more garnet and almost orange color. To think of this wine in human terms, it's been around a block a couple times now. It's leaving its juvenile years and starting to enter maturity. So all that restlessness and that vibrance that it had is now mellowing out. Let's give it a taste. And this wine is definitely starting to get up there in the years. There's some dried cranberry in there, some thyme and sage, and a beautiful licorice element. There's a real warm sensation to this wine that makes me feel like I'm almost drinking port while sitting in a soft leather chair. Pinot Noir is beautiful as it ages, and this is in the perfect window of time for drinking. It's comforting in a way that words can't necessarily describe. You just feel it. We're gonna pair this wine up with a quinoa kale cherry salad. And we had some dried cherry and even brandied flavors in this wine, and I think that'll pair obviously with the cherries, but the nuttiness of the quinoa is what's really gonna match with this wine. This is the Lachini 2012 Pinot Noir, and it's also from the Chehala Mountains region. It's going from those vibrant ruby colors now, starting to change to garnet and orange. There's this beautiful potpourri of aromas in here, from dried fruits to flowers and even spices. The smell is more of a feeling, and to me, it reminds me of a cool autumn day. In a word, this is earthy, which is what Pinot Noir does as it gets older. I described it as sort of being like a cool fall day, and you get all of that in the glass here. There's those dried fruits and flowers too, and of course, spices, things like nutmeg and cinnamon. At this stage of its life, with a bit more oxidation in there, it's drinking more like a port or a sherry. I think this Pinot is right on the edge of being at its best, and we should drink this now. And I think the organic and biodynamic approach is really lending itself to that earthiness here. If you could take an entire season out of the year and put it in a bottle, this wine would be that. Let's pair this wine with duck breast over soba noodles. The soy and honey ingredients in this dish are gonna serve as a great complement to those savory umami flavors in this Pinot Noir. So, when is less more? Well, when it comes to high quality wines, I hope we've demonstrated with this tasting that it's not how much you have, it's how much you get out of it. There's beauty in every drop, if you know where to look. Thanks for joining me today, and don't forget, if you're gonna buy anything through Wine Still Sold Out, this pack included, be sure to get your $10 off discount by using my code MARK2021 at checkout. I'm Mark Subsick. Cheers.